Hi everyone, this is a video on how to set up and install a Python development environment in a brand new CentOS 7 virtual machine. My virtual machine has already been set up. I'm using VMware Fusion for Mac as my hypervisor. Uh, details on how to set up VMware Fusion Pro and how to network virtual machines together to create your own lab environment will be covered in a future video. But today we are going to cover a few basics that I know some of you out there might find useful. Specifically, we're going to talk about the safe way to set up a Python development environment on a Linux distribution. And we are going to use and set up the free version of my favorite Python editor, which is PyCharm Community. So with that in mind, let's get started. Okay. So as you can see, I already have Python 3.5 installed. Uh, in fact, I actually installed Python 3.5.3 when I was preparing for this tutorial. Um, you can see the default version of Python on uh, CentOS 7 is uh, Python 2.7.5. And we can tell this because if we do, if we just run Python at the shell, you can see it takes us straight into 2.7.5. So let's take a step back here and think for a minute. If you're somewhat new to Linux or Python development, you may be asking to yourselves, okay, why can't I just download and compile a new version of Python straight over the top of my default install? Well, I will be as honest as possible here. The problem with that approach is you risk bricking your existing Linux install. In fact, actually, let me rephrase that. You will brick your existing Linux install. I'm not going to demonstrate it here because I don't have the time. However, what I'm about to show you is a best practice and the method I'm showing you is not new. It is documented on python.org. So with that in mind, if I show you a few things first, um, so the default install location for the system version of Python is user bin Python. If you were to just download, I don't know, say Python 3.5 like I did earlier and just run the compilation process in exactly the same way as you would any other program, well, you will essentially be installing your new Python version over this one here in user bin python so what will effectively happen is you'll have uh, it'll just be a mess and it won't work so don't do it what i am about to show you is that earlier when i installed python 3.5 i installed it to a new location and the way to do this is to follow a procedure i'm about to show you Right, okay. So as I've already installed Python 3.53 using the exact method I'm gonna show you now, I'm gonna install Python 3.6.1. I'm not actually gonna use it. I'm just doing it for the sake of the video. So there we go. So we just download the gzip save file and that should save pretty quickly because I have a pretty damn fast internet connection. And we're gonna move Python, the download for TGZ file, so TGZ file. We're going to move that to the desktop. And we're going to move Python dash 3.61 to, we're going to move our download to the directory I created. And we're going to the CD into that directory. Oops. Yeah, no caps. And we're gonna extract this file. So this is the tar command. And to extract a gzip file, you're just gonna run this tar minus star space, tar space, minus x zvf space star. So you cd into the directory where your gzip file is and you just run that command and it just works. Guys, okay, there's no magic to it. It's not rocket science. There we go. And we're going to quickly jump into this directory. There we are. Okay, so we need to be root to do this. I'm just going to do that. 
shocking, I know. There we go. And there we are. You can see that this ran without any issues. Uh, if there were any problems, it would have said so. Right, now the next, well, at least that's the assumption, but I know as a fact it would have said so. So next we just need to make, make. Okay, and we can see that uh, this worked. Uh, again, as I said before, if there were any issues, we would see it. So the next command we're going to run, guys, is make alt install. Make alt install. And here we are. We can see that now Python 3.6 is successfully installed. So now, as you can see, uh, all we have to do is just run Python 3.6. And there we go, we're in the Python 3.6.1 shell. Okay, now to exit out of this, just to quit, I'm just gonna clear my screen here. Okay, if I want to run Python 3.5, I can, there we go. And uh, there we are, Python 3.5.3, and quit. If I just want to run Python 2.7, there we go. Right, now that we've installed the version of Python, which we will be using in our coding projects, the next step is for us to install a development environment where we can write our code. So I can hear some of you asking, why do I need to do that when I can just use a advanced text editor? Using a text editor when you are learning a programming language is fine. However, when you start to work on your own projects and you start to deal with over a hundred lines of code, you will soon start to look for a better alternative. Of course, some of us are slightly masochistic. Personally, that's not my thing and I like to use PyCharm IDE environment. So let's install that now. Okay, so the PyCharm IDE can be downloaded from jetbrains.com. Scroll to the top of the page and hover over IDEs. And here we can see PyCharm. So click on that and select download. I don't use the professional version because I think that the community edition has all the features that I need for now. However, that may change in the future. So I've already downloaded PyCharm. So let's get started with the install. Let's just go into the directory where we downloaded the file. In this case, it's the desktop. And we can see I've already created the PyCharm folder. CD to PyCharm. So extract the GZIP file. Right, next. Let's just CD into the directory that was created. And we are going to run PyCharm sh now it's asking us if we want to import settings no we do not we accept see this is relatively easy so in the initial configuration it will ask us for our key map scheme ide theme editor colors and fonts i like these settings default for gnome dark color dark color okay and just click OK. So I'm going to restart and uh, pause the video. So let's just create a dummy project. Uh, I, I want to show you a few things. So yeah, OK, here we are. Interpreter. I want to create a virtual environment. We're going to call this test project. And for the interpreter, we are going to select the version of Python which we want to use. Use a local bin, Python 3.5. Here. Let's click OK. So PyCharm does a lot of things for you in the background. I really like it. It makes my work so much easier. I don't have to think about a lot of things. Uh, I can just concentrate on what's important and that's the coding. So project location and 
Great. So just a few things I want to show you before I end this video. If we go to File, Settings, and we go to General and Appearance, this is where you can customize the appearance of uh, where you're writing the code. Um, I like to include show white spaces and show line numbers. Show line numbers is really on by default, but you never know. If we go to project, and so for project name, I named it my code. Just in case you didn't set up your project interpreter, you can, uh, you can adjust that setting here under project interpreter. And then you can select another interpreter if you want, okay? Another thing that I want to show you quickly, which I think is pretty cool. So normally when you want to install uh, Python modules, uh, you would use the pip uh, space install or easy install. And you can find information on that on the python.org website. But if you go into settings, project interpreter, and you click on the add button. Okay, there we go. And say, for example, I want to install the requests module there we are and we can just simply click on install package and i will do this now to prove that it works and there we go you can see at the bottom here it's installing the request package and here we can see request install successfully oh if you want to uh, exit out of here what you do is you right click and you go to close there we go so there is one uh, last thing that i wanted to show you before we, uh, before we finish, if we are in PyCharm, you see, so this is our project window. So this is where we will see all of our projects. Okay, I created a file here. To create a file, it's very easy. You just right click, new, and then you, you can create your own Python file or HTML file. You can find a lot of help about PyCharm on the uh, jetbrains.com website. I fully recommend that you go there and check out some of the tutorials they're very useful uh, one uh, thing which i wanted to show you which i think is pretty cool if you don't want to launch a separate shell to run all of your python commands in uh, say you're running some python tests or you, you want to test some code in the interpreter all you need to do is if you go down to the top to the bottom sorry bottom left hand corner of the pycharm application and you'll see here, you can actually access the terminal and Python console directly from here. In fact, if you click on this icon, you will see that Python console and terminal are now permanently uh, uh, available as menus in the bottom left corner of your screen. So if you, if you open terminal, it just opens a terminal window and then you have to run Python. Um, and you know, the great thing here is it actually opens the, the uh, default version of Python that we want to use. We want to use Python 3.5. And notice, it's also opened up the Python interpreter, which is uh, which we set up for our project. So this is the uh, this is the Python virtual environment, which is just launched. Okay, it's not a default shell. Let me show you the difference. If I open a terminal session by default as we saw earlier if i just type python it just opens python 2.7.5 okay so um a few things that i want to go through with you when we installed a uh, pycharm earlier uh, there was no default entry created in the applications menu so that we can access it through here through the normal way uh, in fact, the way that you have to access PyCharm by default is via the command line. Uh, but this is pretty annoying, so I'm going to show you a way as to how we can avoid this. Okay, the first thing that we need is we need to be the root user. So the shell needs to be root in order for us to execute the PyCharm program. Otherwise, it just launches the setup utility. Okay, so there we are. Now, in order to run this command, sudo minus s, you need to be in the sudo as file. Okay, now I'll show you quickly what this is. Um, I'm sure some of you already know what this is, but I'm just doing this for the new guys. So, in order to edit the sudo as file, you need to be root. Okay, it will not work if you're 
your default user even if you're an admin user it will not work unless you're root okay and then you see here so right now I'm at the line 92 so we can see this 92 okay you can watch your mouse 92 right and I all I did is I just uh, I just wrote my username and copied what was in the top here for root now this is not what would what you would see in a production system but this is not a production system this is literally it's for my own use so I don't really care about how it's meant to be done properly I just want to get it working okay and uh, so once you've edited this uh, um, actually a tutorial on the V is uh, probably uh, <laughs> probably in the works but uh, it's really out of scope for this video whenever you're quitting V if you've made changes just do shift colon and then type WQ okay so that just saves and quits the editor like that oh, okay so actually uh, you need to do the uh, WQ exclamation mark and there we are okay now let's just um, let's just uh, launch PyCharm quickly this is how we add PyCharm back into the application menu so you'll you won't have to launch PyCharm from the command line again you'll be able to launch it from um, an icon in the application so when you go to applications you'll see it up there okay so all you do is you just go to tools and create desktop entry actually what we need to do is create the entry for all users okay and click on ok and there we are we can see that that is created if we go up here we can see PyCharm is now here so it's available to the admin user now so the reason this wasn't working before was because I installed this as root and PyCharm was only available to the root user if I had launched the PyCharm SH script from the admin account, it would have just run the setup utility again. That's all.